morning and welcome to Mount Nebo Baptist Church. We certainly thank God for each and every one of you joining in with us today. We serve an incredible God. In fact, he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. He is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace, and we certainly thank God for him. We have some wonderful persons uh, to join us today uh, and help us, assist us in our devotion. Reverend and Sister Melvin Smith will bless us. And then a young lady who was born and raised right here at Mount Nebo Baptist Church, Sister Brigitte K. Turner will bless us in song. Listen, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. morning. I will be reading from the New International Version, 1 John chapter 4, verses 14 through 21. That's 1 John chapter 4, verses 14 through 21. And it reads, And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God. God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or a sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this commandment. And anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Amen. Let us pray. Precious Father in heaven, Lord, we come with a grateful heart, thanking you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. My heavenly Father, we come just thanking you because of who you are. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came down to this world to show us, to teach us how we should live and then died for our sins and rose for our justification. And because of that, Lord, we have a relationship with you because the only thing that we have to do is just believe that Jesus is your son. My Heavenly Father, we thank you right now. We lift you up and we give you praises and honor because you are God and God alone. Lord, we ask that you would just forgive us of our shortcomings and our sins. We know that in this world, my Heavenly Father, there are so many things that distracts us. But as we put our trust in you, and as we continue to depend on you, Lord, we know that everything will be all right. Just continue to guide us and direct our paths. And my Heavenly Father, when we do fall short, Father, just give us the wisdom to understand that you are our hope. You are our 
joy for tomorrow. You are our peace and you are everything that we need. And then as we confess our sins and draw closer to you, and my heavenly Father, this world would be a better place. Father, we just come praying for elected officials from the president, for the governor, for the mayor, and all elected officials, Father, that they will uphold their responsibilities and do what their job requirements for them to do, to watch out for the good of the people, to love the people. Father, in your name, we just can't thank you enough. You've just been so good to us. You are all that we need. And Lord, we know that you will never leave us or forsake us. That even in the bad times, Lord, you are still there because you are God and God alone. Father, for those who are sick, we ask your blessing upon them. And Father, for those who are dealing with pain of loved ones who have gone on home, we ask that you would just comfort them because we know that this is not our home, but we have a home to go with too. And as we continue to build up timber, my heavenly Father, as we continue to do what is right, we are having and knowing, my heavenly Father, that because what we do down here will follow us up to heaven and we will get the glory and we will thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done. In the precious name of Jesus, we do pray, amen.
announcements. First of all, our virtual youth day is scheduled for next Sunday, June the 14th at 11 a.m. We are very excited about our special guest, Mr. Gavin Hughes, drum major of the mighty and magnificent Jackson State University, Sonic Boom of the South. In case you have not heard him, he is an incredibly gifted young man. And Lord's willing, he will be here offering a word of inspiration and a song of inspiration for our young people. I am scheduled to offer a word to our youth as well. And then immediately following the very next day, we'll begin our virtual vacation Bible school for our youth. That is Monday through Thursday, June the 15th through the 19th from 6 to 7 p.m. Our theme for our youth vacation Bible school is discovering I am with Jesus as a strong foundation. Youth leaders will provide the Zoom link to all of our parents. Also, for more details, email us at info at mountnebochurch.org. Also, we have virtual vacation Bible school for our adults, Monday through Thursday, June the 15th through the 19th, beginning at 7 p.m. We will continue with our Bible study book, Step by Step Through the Old Testament. Our Vacation Bible School lesson for the week will be Nehemiah's nemesis, Enemy Get Thee Behind, Victory Is Mine. Be sure and join us uh, on the church's conference call number or watch us, of course, on the church's YouTube channel. Finally, in celebration of Father's Day, we have scheduled a grocery giveaway for needy families in the community. For example, there are some young people in the community who depend on school breakfast and school lunch for nourishment. Well, school is out, so we're hoping to help out. However, this giveaway is for all needy families, young, middle-aged, and old. It is scheduled for the day before Father's Day, Saturday, June the 20th at 11 a.m. Drive through, stay in your vehicle. We will place groceries in your vehicle. Of course, this will be first come, first serve. We thank God for you. This concludes our announcements. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Oh God, we come once again to say thank you. Thank you for this day that you have made. Thank you for this worship experience. Thank you for all that we have already witnessed. And we ask now, oh God, your blessings upon this message. Lord, speak through us and oh God, speak to us and we shall forever bless your holy name. We thank you so much for your son Jesus Christ who died for our sins and yet rose again. It is in his name we do pray, amen. Giving all praise and glory to God Almighty, the one who made the world in six days, the one who saved the world in three days and will forever change the world one of these old days. Certainly we thank God for his manifold mercies, his bountiful blessings, and his gratuitous grace. We thank God for the Mount Nebo church family, all of our leaders, members, visitors, and friends. We appreciate the assistance today of our clergy, our music ministry, and of course our ever faithful media ministry. One could argue that our trouble started in spring 2020, and you know what I'm talking about. God has protected us. God has provided for us, and according to the outside temperature, we're now in summer 2020. God has brought us 
out of one season into a brand new season. Seasons change, but our God stays the same. He brought us this far, and he's taking us the rest of the way. There is a word today found in the first epistle of John, the first epistle of John, 1 John chapter 4, our text comes from verses 7 through 12. 1 John chapter 4, I'm reading verses 7 through 12. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. We thank God for his holy word. Today we'd like to share from the subject, give love a chance. Give love a chance. My brothers and my sisters, ever since Cain slew Abel, a hatred has had his chance. Hatred has annoyed and destroyed. Hatred has scarred and barred. Hatred has divided and misguided, upset and set up. Hatred has torn down and torn up. Hatred has messed over and messed up, goofed off and goofed up. Hatred has burned down and burned up. Hatred has tied folks down and tied folks up. Hatred has frustrated and irritated and segregated, subjugated. Hatred had its opportunity. It's time for us to give love a chance. Thomas Akempis said, whoever loves much does much. Someone else said, it is natural to love them that love us. But it is supernatural to love those that hate us. Richard Halverson said, there is nothing you can do to make God love you more. And there is nothing you can do to make God love you less. His love is unconditional, impartial, everlasting, infinite, and perfect. My friends, hatred had his round. Let's give love a chance. Speaking of love, there's an old true story. In 1942, during World War II, a little Jewish girl named Gerda was separated from her parents and she was sent to a Nazi concentration camp where the people, all the people were starving to death. Gerda made a friend there and one day her friend was walking and her friend found a single raspberry. And her friend, who was hungry herself, put that raspberry in her pocket and took it and gave it to Gerda. Friends, imagine a world where you take all of the little bit you have and give it to your friend. Well, that's not all. When Gerda was rescued by American soldiers, she was 21 years old and she weighed 65 pounds in an amazing love story. She eventually married the American soldier that rescued her. Perhaps the raspberry she received from her friend played a role in her survival. 
not that it nourished her, but undoubtedly it encouraged her. Beloved, it's time for us to give love a chance. Of course, our author today is John. As you know, he is one of the 12 apostles. We believe he is the only apostle of the original 12 to live a long life. Peter, James, and all the others died as young men fighting for the faith. Only John survived. Ironically, because he survived, thrived, stayed alive, it is feasible to argue that John suffered the most. He was persistently persecuted, and toward the end, he was exiled, but God kept him. In fact, God kept him long enough for him to write 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John and the book of Revelation. If God is keeping you, there is something else he wants you to do. We don't go to glory until we finish this story. Speaking of love, as you know, John claimed to be in the gospel of John. John claimed to be the one that Jesus loved. In other words, he, de he, he, he declared himself to be Jesus' favorite. Well, Jesus himself neither confirmed or affirmed any favorites, but as he hung, dying on a cruel cross, he looked at his mother and he looked at John and he said, John, she's now your mother and you are now her son. Jesus knew that John would love his mother as if she were his own. Give love a chance. Well, now John says to us in verses 7 and 8 that we should indeed love one another because love is of God. If, John says, if we don't know love, we can't know God, for God is love. Nelson says, to know God here refers to an intimate experiential knowledge of God rather than just information about God. It's not enough to have, uh, to have heard about God and read about God and thought about God. That's not enough to really know God. You have to feel God, and in order to feel God, you must experience God. The old pram owner said, I wouldn't have a religion I couldn't feel sometimes. For those of you who've never been through anything, I brought some challenging news. It's hard to fully know him if you hadn't been to battle with him. Listen, he'll get down in the trenches with you and fight along beside you and he'll fight for you. You have to experience him to know him and if you really know him, then you'll know love. We have several thoughts to offer, and we'll be out of the way. Number one, give agape love a chance. That's right, give agape love a chance. As you know, there are a few different kinds of love, and I'll offer just a few of them. Uh, first of all, eros. Eros is romantic love. And then secondly, filio is brotherly or neighborly or friendly love. And then there's another one, a storgy. Storgy is empathetic love or love because of familiarity. In other words, with storgy, in other words, chance brought us together and because of that, we love each other. The best example of storgy would be family member love. And then, of course, there is agape love, which is God's unconditional love. And so let's talk about God's 
unconditional love, it requires us to do a few things. If we are going to practice God's unconditional love, we must do a few things. First of all, we must forgive something. Yes, forgive something. If we're going to love like God loves, we must be willing to forgive something. John says it right here in verse 10. He says, herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. Hallelujah. He loved us so much that he sent his son to be the propitiation or the atonement for our sins. When God sent Jesus to die for our sins, friends, he forgave something. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 14 and 15, if you cannot manage to forgive others, God won't manage to forgive you. Lewis Mead said, to forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover that the prisoner was you. And watch this, forgiveness, watch this, forgiveness does not change the past, but it sure does change the future. Someone else said, when you forgive, you heal. And when you let go, you grow. And finally, it takes a strong person to say, I'm sorry. And it takes a stronger person to accept it. To love like God. To love like God loves, we must forgive something. And then secondly, we must give something. In verse 9, John says that God sent his only begotten son. Emphasis on only. Listen, if I have an entire cake, I might give you a slice. If I have five coats, I might give you one. If you have four automobiles, you might let me borrow one. It's one thing to give out of an overflow. It's another thing to give your only. God gave his only. Songwriter said God sent his son. He called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives, friends, because God sent his only, there is hope for me. If we're going to love like God loves, we have to give something. We have to give something. If we're going to love like God loves, agape love, we have to give something. How about this? Watch this now. Let's give Watch this, let's give of our time, let's give of our talent, and let's give of our treasure. This country is filled with disadvantaged young people that are yet loaded with potential, but they need some grown people to serve as mentors and tutors and encouragers and give of their time and their talent. The, the teachers can't do it by themselves. The principals can't do it by themselves. Some of the parents aren't even trying to do it themselves. Maybe they used to, but, but this thing today is bigger than used to. Used to has changed. The schools need our help, and they appreciate our help. Find an inner city institution of learning and offer to help. We've learned from experience. They are thankful for the help. President 
Barack Obama said, if you think education is expensive, wait until you see how much ignorance costs. President Abraham Lincoln said, teach the children so it will not be necessary to teach the adults. Another wise person said, every child is gifted. They just unwrap their packages at different times. We must give of our talent and time to those who need our talent and time. The children, but not just the children, the church and the great communities throughout this great country need our talent and they need our time. Moreover, and I hadn't forgotten, moreover, if you can't be there, send something over there. We must give of our treasure. Oh yeah, it takes money, honey. Listen, I am perturbed and disturbed by the gross lack of funding for some of our schools. The government must do better, but not only that, those of us who can in the community must do better. We fund what we want to fund and we cut what we want to cut. Let's give time. Let's give talent, let's give treasure where the people are hurting for education, hurting for job creation, hurting for health care. Jesus didn't say love yourself as much as you want to love yourself and take care of yourself only. Jesus said love your neighbor as you love yourself. We'll see a turnaround if we ever decide to give love a chance. Forgive something. Give something. And then give up something. Forgive something. Give something. And then give up something. John says in verse 11, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. If God loved us enough to give up his only son, we ought to love each other enough to give up something. If we're going to give love a chance, if we're going to give agape love a chance, we, it is mandatory that we give up something. The late great Dr. Mac, Mac, Dr. Mac King Carter, world-renowned, brilliant pastor, pastor in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, born 1947, died 2013. He told a true story. He said once he was in a he was in a Publix grocery store. And he ended up in line behind a, a little girl who had two bags of pot potato chips to purchase. Dr. Carter overheard the cashier inform the girl that, the, that she only had enough money for one bag of chips. The little girl said, well, one bag is for me and the other bag is for my little brother. But, but since I can't give him a bag, I won't get a bag. Dr. Carter ended up purchasing both bags for the girl. That's similar to our earlier story of the raspberry. Love is giving up something. Speaking of giving up something, it's time for the state I love to give up something. It's time for the great state of Mississippi the Magnolia State, the Hospitality State, wonderful, beautiful state to give up something that she has held on to for far too long. Since 1894, she has waved a banner that was first adopted by the Confederate States of America in 1863 in the middle of the Civil War. 
a flag that represents the right to slavery, lynching, rape, murder, and brutality. When it was adopted, that's exactly what it represented. States' rights to dehumanize a people. The truth hurts, my friend, but it's better to be slapped with the truth than to be kissed with a lie. Let us adopt a flag that we can all be proud of since it represents us all. At minimum, let's adopt a flag that half of the state is not ashamed of. Well, it's our heritage. Heritage of what? Heritage of hate. Hatred had his, had his chance. Nothing good comes from it. Hatred will continually fail deplorably and wretchedly. Let's give love a chance. We don't have to be last forever. If we give love a chance, our standing and our ranking will be enhanced. I'm convinced if we give love a chance, God will elevate us. After all, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. I was very deeply stained within, and I was sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I, and all my heart to him I give. Ever to him I'll cling, in his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and love so true, merits my soul's best song, faithful love and service too. To him belong souls, I'm moving on, but souls in danger. Look above, Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He your savior wants to be. Why won't you be saved today? When nothing else could help, when the preacher, the deacon, mama and daddy, when the whole church and the whole community could not help, it was God's love. That lifted me. Hate has never brought about peace. Only love can do that. Hatred will forever relegate us. Whereas love has proven that it can elevate us. Mississippi, America, let's give love a chance. Our first major thought, give agape love a chance. Our second major thought, give the light of Jesus a chance. Give the light of Jesus a chance. Verse 9 says that God sent Jesus that we might, watch this, that we might live through him. Jesus said in John 10 and 10, I, I am come, the thief coming but for to steal, kill and destroy, but I am come that you might have life, have it more abundantly. Jesus also said in John 8 and 12, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He is the light of life. If you want abundant life, follow his light. Give the light of Jesus a chance. My brothers and sisters, I am so impressed by the way the whole wide world is embracing today's movement. 
The other day, Reverend, Reverend Shopton indicated in some cases there are more uh, of other races, including whites, more of them marching than blacks in some cases. And an elderly white gentleman was knocked over by policemen just the other day while he was peacefully protesting. An elderly white gentleman knocked over and bloodied in Buffalo, New York. Young people in Germany marching. Young people in front of parliament in London, England, marching, protesting. It's time out. The world is saying it's time out for beating up on anybody just because their skin color or nationality is different. If we follow Jesus' light, it leads to love. If we follow Jesus' light, we will love our fellow man in spite of our differences. And we all have something we can work on. Give the light of Jesus a chance. If you have not yet opened the door of your heart to Jesus, it's time to turn the knob. You tried it your way. Now it's time to try it his way. Give his love and give his light a chance. Listen, if our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us uh, an economist. If our greatest need had, had been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness, so God sent us a savior. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's not easy. Many have tried. Many have tried. But it's not easy walking and talking and living and struggling and striving in darkness. Give the light of Jesus a chance. On our way out of here, give agape love a chance. Give the light of Jesus a chance. And watch this. Give listening to others a chance. That's right, give listening to others a chance. If you're going to love people, it is required that you listen to people. In some measure, that's what the protests have been about, America's inability to listen. Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey, and George Lloyd back to back to back. Our young people are pleading for somebody to listen. When we love each other, we listen to one another. I'm closing. One of the reasons God created us was to love us. And he wants us to love him back. But he doesn't force us to love him that wouldn't be love. He wants us to choose to love him. He made us to love him. Matthew Henry says, shall we refuse to love those whom the eternal God hath loved? We should be admirers of his love, lovers of his love, and consequently lovers of those whom he loves. The sacred, watch this, the sacred lovers of the brethren are the temples of God. The divine majesty has a peculiar residence there. When we love each other, we become God's temple. He comfortably dwells in us when we love each other because God is love. Holman's commentary says we may have trouble loving perfectly, but there is a big difference 
between not loving perfectly and not loving at all. Finally, in verse 12, John almost seems to be contradicting himself. But I know what he's saying. He says, we cannot see God. That's right. He says, we cannot see God. But then he says, if we love each other, like we're supposed to love each other, when we look at each other, what do you know? We can see God. If we somehow, I'm done, if we somehow learn to love one another, we could accomplish so much together. On my way out, I need to share this. As you know, pygmies, pygmies are a class of people in equatorial Africa and Southeast Asia, parts of Southeast, Southeast Asia, and they typically grow to less than five feet tall. Pygmies are, are really short. A, a, a pygmy, true story, a pygmy was once seen standing over a dead rhino. And someone asked the pygmy, how did he kill that huge rhino? And the pygmy replied, his reply was, I killed it with my club. Then they asked, well, how big was your club? His reply was, there are 100 pygmies in my club. If, friends, 100 pygmies can kill a rhino with clubs, imagine what 325 million Americans could get done if we would just work together. If we would listen to each other and work together, if we would give love a chance, God would turn our down and out into up and about. Make America great again. Because of God's grace, we're already great. Let's not go backwards. Let's go forward. Greater, much greater, much, much greater is at our fingertips if we would only give love a chance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Lord, we bless your name. We give you the praise. You are an awesome God. Your word says, if we're going to define you, the best way to define you is to say God is love. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you for your love. that You loved us so much that you gave your own leg. You gave up your own leg so that we might have a right to eternal life. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. Help us to love each other, oh God. Help us to give love a chance. Things will be so much better. We give you the glory. If there's one who has not accepted you, one who has not received the gift of eternal life, touch right now, oh God. We'll forever give you the praise. If there's one who does not yet have a church home, lead them, oh God. Help them to understand they need to be a part of a fellowship. They need that love from the saints. We thank you, sir. And we ask now that you would bless this celebration of what Jesus did for us. Bless now, O oh God, the bread and the cup, which represents his body that was broken and his blood that was shed. Bless today, O oh God, and we shall forever bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 26 through 28. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do.
do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. I don't possess houses or lands, fine clothes or jewelry, sorrows and cares of this whole world, my lot seems to be. Christ is all means more to me than this world's riches. He is my sight, my guarding light through pathless seas. Yes, it's my delight to break it and said this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped saying this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do in remembrance of me. Amen. And thank you, Jesus. 